Good morning, Manitoba. I'm Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour and every Saturday morning from 8 to 9. Thanks for tuning in. Peak of the Market is on Twitter. Follow us at Peak of the Market for recipes and Food and Friends guest updates. We have over 110,000 Twitter followers, and we'd love to have you follow us too. Again, we're at Peak of the Market, or you can follow me at Larry McIntosh. My guest this morning is Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Larry. How are you doing today? Very well. Can't complain. So you're at the Delta Winnipeg? Yes. And uh, it's got to be a busy time of year. Is there like Christmas functions, holiday functions going on? It is unbelievably busy right now. It's uh, probably the most hectic time of the year, aside from gala season where we uh, you know, have a lot of the big gala events. But uh, right now it's nonstop Christmas parties. Uh, we're looking at anywhere between four to five a day right now. So Four to five a day? Wow. Absolutely. There's nights where, there's days where we're running through a thousand people. So so this time of year, it's uh, all hands on deck, so to speak. So you snuck out this morning? It is. I did, I did have an opportunity. <laughs> I just uh, poked my head in this morning and then I figured I'd come right over, but I'm going straight back to the hotel right after to uh, take care of, I think we have four functions tonight. So Wow. So... Obviously, the holiday season is an important one. You have a gala season, which is uh, charity events to a large degree, I assume? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, spring is normally the gala season, uh, okay. where we do a lot of our gala events. Uh, we do a few in the fall, and then, of course, Christmas season is starting earlier every year, actually, we find. Um, but we're starting mid-November uh, for our Christmas season, and then it's also running later, too, because a lot of the parties can't get in early. So we're doing a lot of Christmas parties in January as well, so... I was going to say that more companies I talk to seem to be doing it in January, be it whether they're in retail or, or just want to you know get through that hectic season and have it later. So that's got to be nice from a spacing point of view, almost. It is nice. It, it breaks it up a little. Uh, and like you said, you know the retail. You get, uh, for example, a lot of our our hair salons that uh, have uh, their Christmas parties with us come in in January because it finally slows down for them. Um, so even for us, for example, the our hotel. Uh, with all the staff on deck and hands on deck, as it is right now, being so busy, our Christmas party probably won't happen until January as well because we just have no time. So, so in the summertime, it's I assume because you're connected to the Convention Center of the Delta, uh, you're busy with conventions year round. But summertime is a little slower time of year, or it is a little slower. You still get the odd conference here and there, um, but it's also a good time to recruit, to train, to plan out your fall and your winter, redesign menus, cost new items out, find new ideas, and and plan for dinners such as yours. An example that uh, is in November, so mm-hmm. it's a good downtime, um, and it's a good break for some people as well. So. And we're going to spend some time in the next segment talking about the Peak of the Market Charity Dinner, because I, th- I think that's worth talking about what you accomplished there. But we're going to save that till the next segment. Certainly. Y- you also do weddings on that, I assume? Weddings, absolutely. Uh, weddings, typically, once again, that's more of a summer, late spring, summer. You get the odd one that are winter. We actually have one this year that uh, we're looking at uh, hosting on New Year's Eve, which will be a, a nice touch. Oh, yeah. um, but once again, it's more of a, a spring, late spring, summer uh, occasion. Uh, but once again, we probably, I'd say on average, anywhere between 12 to 20 weddings uh, in that short span there. So, And Shelly and I got married at the Delta Winnipeg. You weren't there at the time, but that we got married on in January. So that was kind right. of an unusual wedding for that time of year. We like to do things differently, though. This is true. This is true. <laughs> you don't have to agree so quickly. Well, I, 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 you know, I've worked with you long enough, Larry. I, I know quite well. So so what what would the slowest time a period for a chef at a major hotel like UB is it is it the summertime or is it the... I would say yeah uh, late Jan- late July early August there's about a 3 week span in there where it's fairly quiet so um, but once again it's it's a nice break it's not gives you opportunity to look at other things um, more importantly i think for most of us it is that nice break that you can get out and it's a break that you normally don't get to enjoy cuz it's in the summer mm-hmm. beautiful weather so if i can get on the boat you know i'm happy so so uh, when you do uh, events, um, let's say the galas that, the, that, are, that come up that's in the spring or the Christmas lunch or dinners now, are you going off select, select menus? I know for the peak dinner we do something very special, but is it generally off a menu or does everybody do their own thing or is it a combination of? Or? Uh, you know what, it's a combination. Really what happens is any of the conferences that we hold or a lot of the Christmas parties, they are all select menus. So they have uh, menu options that they can choose from and go from there. A lot of the galas though, especially now moving forward um, with what we're trying to accomplish at the hotel, um, we're going to a really personalized approach with the galas. And that's one of my main focuses is I'll get an idea of what they're kind of looking for that year in particular. 
And because every year they want it to be a little different, uh, a little more extravagant, a little better, you know, a little more over the top. So now we're focusing on that. So every gala that we come through, I sit with the clients personally, like I do with yourself. Um, and we design a menu based on that year, what they're looking for, what their theme is. So it's completely personalized, something nobody's ever seen before and something that everybody will remember. So. So as, as, a, as a chef, and I know you, we've known each other for a lot of years, you're very creative, you're very passionate. We're going to talk more about that as the show goes on. But you also have the other side of it. You have to worry about the budget. Yes, most definitely. That, and, you know, especially working in a big hotel like Delta, uh, that's one of the key things they look at is, is all your, your food costs, your labor costs, mm-hmm. everything, what it takes to put into a meal. Um, and a lot of times, you know what, you ha- you're, you're very cognizant of that, but at the same token, you have to have that, room to and they and they allow that for you that room to be creative and to be over the top and to be memorable so that is always taken in, into consideration when you're planning uh, when you're budgeting the whole nine yards and and, and once again you know what it, it's all comes as a whole package and when it all comes together it's a beautiful thing so and that's no different if you had your own restaurant or whatever you always have to worry about balancing the two because i mean you could put on a huge show but if you're going to lose money for the hotel or your restaurant or whatever it might be you have to worry about that too well, absolutely we're all, you know and in the end we're all here to get paid and we're all here to make money for somebody else or for ourselves mm-hmm. uh, so if we can't accomplish that we're definitely not completing our job but with that being said as well even with you know whether you're creating something with ten dollars or creating something with two dollars you can still do a fantastic job and blow them away with it. So, and what's your favorite vegetable? Uh, should I say carrots or? You can say whatever you want. Can I get away with? Uh, <laughs> you know what? Actually, I'm a big fan of peppers. I peppers. Really am. Yeah. Green, red, all sorts. That's why I like it so much because there's so many different variations there. So. Jalapenos. Yep, most definitely. Anaheim's. Absolutely. Wow. Um, and getting into the chilies now too, like the ghost chilies and all that stuff. So, um, but uh, definitely the jalapenos and the Anaheim's for sure. Um, and then the green, red, and yellows are my favorite by far. So, We'll be right back with Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg after we take this break for your 680 CJOB news, uh, sorry, weather update. Right back. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Peak of the Market has a mobile recipe app that works on your smartphone, including the iPhone 6, which I just got mine this week, and on your iPad. It is available free through the Apple, Android, or BlackBerry World app stores or via peakmarket.com. Now, if you haven't downloaded it yet, all you have to do is go to any of those sites and search for Peak Recipes. Here's a few of the features on our app. Over 4,000 recipes at your fingertips. Once you've downloaded, you don't need to be on the Internet anymore. You, you, they're all on your computer or your, or your iPhone or your, or your uh, iPad, um, so you don't need the Internet. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, Do a recipe search with any combination of keywords like potatoes or chickens or ingredients or meal types like dinner or lunch. Uh, Measurements in both metric and imperial. You can rate the recipes after you try them. Uh, You can rate them from one to five carrots. And you can add the ones you really like to a favorites list so it's easy to find later. You can add recipes to a shopping list and check off the items as you shop. You can add notes to the recipes like add more veggies next time. At least that's the note I hope you add. Mm -hmm. Add extra items that you need when you go shopping, uh, such as toothpaste or whatever it might be. Resize the font for the directions for easier reading. You can make them bigger, obviously. And one of my favorite features is absolutely no in-app advertising. So once you download the app, there's no ads in there. It's not asking you to buy anything. It's not asking you to click on anything. It's just about recipes. We're very excited with our mobile app. So please download it. Give it a try. If you don't like it, you can always delete it. It is absolutely free. So please give it a try. We're back with Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg. So we're talking in the last segment about the Peak of the Market Charity Fundraiser Dinner, which was not quite a month ago, but I guess we're getting close to a month ago now. Pretty close, yeah. You remember that? Remember the dinner? Vividly. Vividly. <laughs> Vividly. So let, let, I'll set this up. We've been doing this uh, for 21 years, I think it is now. And it started off with uh, well, some of our growers and coworkers, and it's... It was maybe 40 people in the first couple of years, and this year we were at uh, about 440 people. But the challenge that we give to the chef and the hotel and is everything has to be from Manitoba and has to be available right now. Is that challenging for someone like yourself? The first couple of years I did it, uh, I did the dinner with you uh, when I was at the Delta previously. Uh, it was challenging just because I... It was a new thing for me. So just trying to learn it, the learning curves uh, was somewhat challenging. But after the first couple of years, it was a walk in the park. Um, I think the biggest... Two a biggest walk cha- in walk. the park? Come on. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> Honestly, it, it, it's just 
it's that opportunity to be creative. And it's not even an opportunity. It's a, it's a must. You have to be creative with this dinner. Um, the two biggest challenges, of course, uh, one is creating something that we've never done before for you, uh, for the dinner, uh, something different every year. And the other challenge, of course, is was dinner was normally in, is always November. Sorry. So what's available in November? Right. So we started having to think outside the box and, and allowing us to uh, produce some of the uh, product early um, that we did this year, for example, um, get it all in when it was available produce it, uh, freeze it, whatever we needed to do to it, in, turn it into something so it was a, available in ready November was that was an obvious asset to us. Um, so easy, no, obviously not. But, you know, once again, once you do it a few times, uh, you start thinking outside the box and start thinking more creatively than you did before and the year before. So, and, and it's partly uh, what we want to do it for us to educate people of what's available in Manitoba, not just in vegetables, but in general, whether that's, you know, meat or bread or Saskatoon's are used this year, whatever it might be. But it is a challenge for chefs to get their head around that because we go to dinners during the year, say it's, it's a Manitoba made dinner and it's January and you have strawberries. Well, odds are it's, it's grown in Manitoba, cer- <coughs> excuse me, certainly, but it's not available right then. Right. No, absolutely. And, you know, you're right. You're not going to get fresh strawberries in November, but there's no reason that you can't be using strawberries as an ingredient in your dish if we harvest them when they are available in the summer um, and, you know, get them all produced, like get them all ready at that point so we can use them even as a, you know, a coolie or something, a strawberry coolie on a dessert um, and still hold it as a Manitoba product. So, uh, and like you said, it's it's difficult to wrap your head around because there is so much available in Manitoba from vegetables to uh, to produce to uh, meats to everything else to dairies to breads to you name it there is so much it just takes the time for a chef to go and source it all out so so this year even something as simple as in prior years lemon in the water well we don't grow lemons in manitoba this year you came up with saskatoons right was that what it was absolutely yeah and then uh, i remember it's always because we have contracts that we do with you and it's always in bold lettering no lemons in the water so <laughs> we're, we're very sure of that but uh it's always, you know, I'd rather see a nice little touch in a water glass than just a plain water glass on the table. So uh, we were lucky enough to get uh, Saskatoons in early this year. Uh, we got them all blanched, got them uh, st- lightly steamed, and then we froze them uh, so they're ready. Because we actually had the Saskatoons in about, f- oh, let me think here, uh, four different applications uh, in your dinner. One was in the water glass, one was in one of the sauces, dessert. Uh, so they're kind of all over the place. So um, once again, that's just going outside the box, thinking outside the box, and becoming creative so that you're not left with just an empty, plain water glass, right? So something like our dinner, where it's all got to be Manitoba made, does that challenge you creatively, or is it just really a pain, or you could say both if you want? You know what, I'm, I'm not going to say a pain at all, because to me personally, it's an educational experience as well, uh, because once again, you're trying to use ingredients that you didn't use the year before, or the year before that, or whatever not, or try and finding a new way to use ingredients. So you're always learning something. You're always challenging your mind. You're challenging your creativity. Uh, and then you present a menu to your team, and they're like, wow, this is cool. So they're learning something new, and it's building a team environment there as well. And you know what? Overall, it's just it's just education. It's excitement. It's thinking outside the box. It's challenging yourself to be better, to think better, and to create better. And in the end, it's just it's a wonderful experience. We'll be right back with Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. It's time for a recipe segment called Now We're Cooking. You don't need to write this recipe down as it is today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and in the Winnipeg Free Press. Today's recipe is caramelized sweet potatoes. Caramelized sweet potatoes. Here's what you need for the recipe. One pound of sweet potatoes. One quarter cup of butter. One quarter cup of brown sugar or maple syrup. Two tablespoons of pineapple juice half a cup of pineapple pieces, and a pinch of cinnamon or nutmeg. Wash the sweet potatoes, but do not peel them. In a large pot, boil them until tender, which is about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the size. Remove from heat and drain well. Let cool slightly and then peel. Thickly slice the sweet potatoes and arrange in a single overlapping layer in a greased oven-proof pan, dish I should say. Cut butter into small cubes and dot them over the top. Sprinkle with brown sugar and the pineapple juice. Then add the pineapple and slices to taste. Bake for about 30 to 40 minutes in a preheated oven of 400 degrees Fahrenheit until golden brown. 
This recipe serves four. Again, this is today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and in today's Winnipeg Free Press. And all the recipes on our website and the, newsp- and the newspaper are both in metric and imperial measurements. We'll be right back with Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg after we take this break for your 680 CGOB news, sports, and weather. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Food and Friends Radio is now on TV. Each radio show is filmed and will be posted at mytoba.ca tomorrow. So if you want to see this uh, TV version of this radio show or previous radio shows, please visit mytoba.ca. Thanks to 680 CJOB's Nicole, who produces our show, and Riley, who operates the camera, as well as the teachers of the Broadcasting and Media Arts program at Tech Fox High School. You can also listen to an audio podcast of Food and Friends at soundcloud.com or at the iTunes store. So please just do a search for Food and Friends with Larry at mytoba.ca or soundcloud.com or the iTunes store, and all the shows will come up for your listening or viewing pleasure. It's very important for me to mention that Food and Friends is only available because of 680 CJOB and its advertisers. So please make sure you tune in to 680 CJOB or listen live at cjob.com. We're back with Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg. So let's talk a little bit about the hotel. You've been there. You you just came back recently, but you were there previously. How many rooms in the hotel? We're going to do some quick questions. Oh, put me on the spot now. 393 rooms. I was educated on that officially today. So <laughs> 393 rooms. So that's the largest hotel in Manitoba. I, I remember hearing somewhere along the way. It is, yeah. And we just recently finished. Well, we're almost finished. I'd say we're about 90% finished all renovations. Uh, so there's been well over $20 million in renovations done to the hotel. Uh, from every single one of those 393 rooms uh, to the lobby to the restaurant, which is currently right now still under renovations. It's been a little longer than expected. Uh, but As most renovations seem to. Very true, <laughs> very true. Uh, but we're still open. We're looking at uh, January sometime to open the Blaze back up again, uh, get that rolling. But we've uh, renovated the Bean, the lobby, all the meeting spaces, all the meeting rooms, the Grand Ballroom, which you recently had your dinner in. Um, so everything's been Brand new, renovated, looks spectacular, uh, just an unbelievable transformation. So, in the hotel industry, we've had Helen Halliday on the show, the general manager of the Delta, <clears throat> uh, and I, I. The question I asked her is, I mean, it seems like you're constantly renovating hotels. At the same time, Shelly and I travel a lot, and sometimes when you don't renovate, the, the hotel looks tired. So it's a necessary part of the business, I guess. But twenty million dollars—that's that's a lot of money. It is. It was pretty much a complete overall, aside from the foundation. Uh, pretty much everything was was redone. So, um, and it was done with a, you know a good purpose of the the Delta brand and Delta vision as to what we're trying to look for. Um, and one of the biggest things is you know expect even more. Uh, from us, it's we're more of a you know welcoming, engaging aspect to to our, our drive and our passion now, uh, and you find that even with the renovations, um, a lot of the colors and everything that we're looking at in the hotel are, are based around Manitoba, believe it or not, um, you know with, with the the prairie colors and the skies and so forth, um, but in the end, it's it's more of a a welcoming, engaging atmosphere now. Uh, everywhere from our uniforms all the way to the colors of the hotel, everything. The restaurant actually um, is a prime example of that being that uh, the actual bar and lounge is, is actually part of the lobby now with the bar turned around and facing the lobby and the lounge basically attached to the lobby. So everything's more open, more inviting, more welcoming, um, and our guests have already noticed that. So, And I can say I've seen the rooms, the renovations are beautiful. Uh the lobby area, I don't, they opened up some walls or something. This seems more spacious down there now. The stairway, it's just, it, it, it's a wonderful job. But it has to be hectic to go through that and still continue operating business, obviously. It's tough, absolutely. It's it's not an easy feat to accomplish. Uh, like you said, renovations, there's always delays. Uh, we were hoping to originally have the, uh, you know, restaurant open a couple months ago. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And, you know, we're excited about January, but... Um, it, it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience during renovations. Uh, a lot of, you know, sometimes you run into a lot of different complications. But once again, uh, in the end, it's just like anything else that, uh, that we do. You learn from it. You learn how to get better. You learn how to adapt and uh, how to make it through it. Because in the end, you know that you're there for a better product. And now we've got one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful hotel uh, in Manitoba. So now we just have an opportunity to showcase it and uh, just bring it out to the public. So. So you already had a fairly large kitchen there. Did it, did it change at all during the renovations? Or 
I think it came a little dustier. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. Uh, yeah. You know what? Unfortunately, uh, the back of the house we haven't really uh, looked at yet. But mm-hmm. It was more of a, a public viewing sure. uh, renovation that we did. Um, you know, obviously things change in the kitchen as, as the years go on. We get new equipment, stuff like that. But nothing of a major overhaul. Um, uh, to this point, you know, everybody's uh, dreams are, are held in, in check every once in a while. And, you know, the, the wish lists are full, but uh, nothing yet. So. And the food you produce out of that kitchen with, with the staff and what the facilities you have now is phenomenal. So really, how do you justify spending more money on the kitchen, really? You know, and that's you know what that's the worst. Believe it or not, that's a tough argument to have because people say that constantly. Well, what do you need a new oven for when you guys have lived with this one for the last ten years and you've never had an issue, right? So, uh, you know, it's again, it's nice to have the toys and the bells and the whistles, uh, but sometimes, once again, being a chef, you have to think outside the box. And if you have to, uh, you know, I remember once I, I worked in a, a kitchen where we had a power drill with a paint mixer attached to it to use it for mashed potatoes because we couldn't afford a fancy, you know, Hobart mixer. Mm-hmm. You got to be creative. You got to think outside the box, use what you have, and still make sure that you're putting out the exact same product. So what is your biggest challenge as a chef? Uh, you know what? I think right now my biggest challenge is finding talented, passionate, career-driven individuals. Mm-hmm. I think that would probably be my biggest challenge because my, you know what, I'm still very passionate about what I do uh, on a daily basis and I love teaching I love seeing students come through the door uh, you know and I love developing teams and seeing people grow together Um, I'm just finding it more difficult as time goes on for some reason to find people that are really passionate about cooking uh, and about creating magnificent food so and I would say all the guests we've had over the last three years of food and friends when I ask that question the biggest challenge almost all the time it's people. Biggest challenge and biggest reward or biggest opportunity because you have great people working with you or you can't find enough people. Seems to be a lot of managers and business owners challenge. It is, but you know what? In the end, too, it all comes back to us. And we have to, you know, whether it's equipment, whether it's staff, whether it's people, no matter what it is, we have to figure out a way to use what we're given to the best of its potential and its ability. Um, and everybody has something there. So once we figure that out and tap that individual uh, to what its full potential is, it's easy after that. So We'll be right back with Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. No matter what age you are, I think everyone has a favorite Sesame Street character. Peak of the Market's new Sesame Street potato and onion bags feature Elmo, Big Bird, Grover, Oscar, Abby Cadabby, Rosetta, Cookie Monster, Bert, and Ernie. Nine different Sesame Street characters. I hope you've had an opportunity to see our bright and colorful potato and onion bags at your favorite store. Along with the characters, you'll still see the Peak of the Market logo, so you're guaranteed it's grown right here in Manitoba. We're very pleased to partner with Sesame Street on the Eat Brighter program. I also want to encourage you to drive by Peak of the Market at 1200 King Edward Street if you happen to be in the neighborhood to see the Sesame Street characters on the 150-foot long banner on the outside of our building. We've had people pulling up, getting their pictures taken with Big Bird. It's not very often you see an 18-foot Big Bird, 18-foot tall Big Bird. We're back with Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta, Delta Winnipeg. So, Kelly, you have kids. Do you it's watch really Sesame Street with them? I do, yes. Yes, and I'm your favorite to... character is? Oscar the Grouch. Oscar the Grouch. Well, normally it's first thing in the morning that we're watching Sesame Street. So, you know, if I don't have my coffee, I'm kind of an Oscar the Grouch myself. So it, it kind of you know, just resembles me first thing in the morning while watching Sesame Street. So, Wow. Yeah. The, the Grouch. I, just, I don't see that. Well, you know what? Most people don't. But uh, Do kids have favorite characters? They do, yeah. Uh, my daughter's, believe it or not, is Oscar the Grouch because she loves her dad. So. Mm-hmm. Sure, and okay. And uh, my son is, believe it or not, Snuffleupagus. So. Oh, Snuffleupagus, yeah. 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 We don't he's, have him on any of the bags, no. 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 no he's he's kind of big, right? Well, to fit on a bag. bag. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're talking the last half hour with the Peak in the Market dinner, and I, I want to come back and just touch on that. The main course. Tell, tell us about the meat course or protein. Is it called protein? Whatever you call that. Tell us uh, what you did there. I was That was quite fascinating. A once in a lifetime thing. It was, because <laughs> I'm not going to do it again. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> no, you know what? It was uh, just something off the cuff that I thought of one day. Um, 
you know, I leave work, I go home, and that's I get about an hour of, of just sit down, and I unwind. I think about what's coming up the next day, uh, and I reflect on on what I'm looking at and the day that's just passed, and I get some of my best thinking in then. And uh, an idea idea just popped into my head that you know it'd be so neat if we could somehow figure out a way to do a spit roast, and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges to that, just with food temperatures and stuff like that, and how to present it. But in the end, we uh, we designed a spit roast for you. Um, you know, with a base, and then we had our food on the on the bottom, our potatoes. Um, they were done with uh, some leeks, and then we had a medley of uh, seasonal vegetables, obviously, uh, with some crispy carrots and. And then uh, underneath that, we actually had some smoking wood chips. So as the that tray went out into the room uh, and went onto the stand, the the whole tray was smoking, which was which is a really cool thing because not was. only is it visual, but it's also aromatic. So the entire ballroom uh, smelled like a campfire. Uh, and then I made the uh, spit stand, and we had some uh, Manitoba beef strip loin uh, roasted up, and we put it on a spit. And once again, that went onto the spit stand in the room. Um, I, my wife's actually quite upset with me because we used to have a backyard that was bountiful in trees. And uh, in order to make 50 or actually it was four, 44 spit roast stands, uh, I lost most of my, my trees in the <laughs> Sorry backyard. But you know what? It was all made from Manitoba trees. It was like we truly made it Manitoba. All the wood chips were Manitoba. And I dried them myself from all the shavings from uh, the spit roast making and stuff like that. So uh, it was quite an undertaking. But you know what? The rewards uh, thereafter were amazing. So, and uh, normally the the Peak of the Market charity dinner, which is by invitation only, it's a fundraiser for Cancer Care Manitoba this year. But uh, it, normally we say you know business suits, you know dresses, whatever, you know uh, not formal, but you know reasonably well dressed. This year we said wear jeans. So people were thinking they were going to get hot dogs and beans or something. So they had no idea because we don't we don't share the food information with anybody. There's about a handful of people literally that knows what it's going to be. So the wow factor with these coming out and a little bit of smoke coming off, the campfire smell. I've never you were, you were probably in the kitchen at the time you didn't get to see it. I've never seen so many people take pictures of food hmm. and social media. Anybody that tagged Peak of the Market or at Peak of the Market w- was unbelievable that night. There was thousands of pictures going out of the food. Oh wow! So we we know of about the ones that tagged us. We know there was about forty people that were te- that were were sending out texts or tweets and Facebook. But wow. there was a lot more than that, didn't it? Te- it's just an unbelievable wow factor. So congratulations. Well, and that's the best feeling for a chef is when you have something like that. And I did have an opportunity just to poke my head in at one point, and I did see, you know, one table where there was about five people with their phones out and doing snapping pictures. And that's the best feeling in the world is when you get that gratification and, and you know that the customers and the clients and the consumers are happy and blown away for something they've never seen before. So uh, it was awesome. It was it truly, it was, it was amazing results and uh, I'm very happy that everybody enjoyed it. So, and certainly did. And we raised some money for Cancer Care Manitoba as well. So it was, it was a great evening overall. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so what do you see as coming, uh, trends as a chef? What do you see food trends coming? Anything? You know what? It's, it's really tough to say that because certain things are making a comeback. Mm-hmm. Um, more importantly, I find right now though, it's, it seems to be the trending is, is the dietary restrictions. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, one of the big ones is the gluten uh, intolerance right now, for example. Um, and you notice it on a big scale when you've got, you know, galas or big parties of 300 people. You've got 30, 40 people that you have to worry about with dietary restrictions. So you got to think outside the box again. you got to learn how to adapt your meals, your cooking, stuff like that. Um, so really, you know, trend is, is a tough word in the, in the culinary industry. It really is because... Like I said, things come back after a while, uh, you know, like stuffed baked potatoes making a comeback, mm. you know, from the early 90s. Um, but it's a lot more focused on dietary needs as well as fresh. Uh, local is still a big one that's still kicking around. Um, it was a trend that started, you know, 15, 15 years ago. It's I love that trend, around. by the way. Just, I, just so I you know. I understand that, yeah. <laughs> But uh, that's always a main focus. Anytime people, chefs have an opportunity to say, you know what, I've sourced this all locally. Um, it's still a big trend there. So there's so many out there. Um, and there, there's new ones that pop up every day. Uh, one of the big trends right now, too, that we had at your dinner was the dry ice and the dessert. Right. So there's brand new trends that we try and use, and they just pop up every day. So We'll be right back with Shelly Kelly, Chef Kelly Andreas from the Delta Winnipeg after this break.
Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please join me next Saturday, December 20th. I can't believe it's the 20th already. When my guest will be Chris Warwick from Farmery Estate Brewery. Tune in next Saturday to hear about all the exciting new things happening at Farmery Estate Brewery. My guest today has been Chef Kelly Andreas, uh, the sous chef at the Delta Winnipeg. It's been fun. It's, 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 this hour has flown by. Absolutely, it has. I can't believe it's already passed. <laughs> and I want to thank you very much. I know it's a crazy busy time of year, and you made time to come down to be on the show. So thank you very much for being on Food and Friends. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you to Nicole Bonnycamp, our show's producer, and Riley, our camera guy. Take care, and please... Don't forget to eat your veggies.